Welcome to this webinar, Customs Import Declarations and Overview. Full customs controls are now in place for trading with the European Union. With the exception of non-controlled goods moving from the island of Ireland into Great Britain. Current arrangements will continue to apply to non-controlled goods moving from the island of Ireland to Great Britain while discussions on the Northern Ireland Protocol are continuing. This means you can still delay making your customs declaration on these goods for up to 175 days. So long as you make an entry in declarant records at the time of import. This includes the movement of goods from Northern Ireland to Great Britain via Ireland. You can find out more on gov.uk. There's a series of actions you must take before you import to make sure that you're compliant and so that you can minimise costs and delays. If you import goods, you'll need to make customs import declarations. What paperwork you need to complete and by when will depend on the type of goods you're importing and the location they're imported to. This webinar will help you to understand what your options are and what you need to do in more detail. We'll also look at how elements of the GBEU Free Trade Agreement affects imports. The agreement doesn't affect the basic declaration requirements set out in the UK's published border operating model. This webinar won't cover exporting goods. You can find other videos and webinars coming up by going to gov.uk and searching for Brexit transition. The government has launched the Trader Support Service in 2021, a free to use service helping businesses and traders of all sizes to navigate the changes to the way goods move now the Northern Ireland Protocol is in effect. The Trader Support Service enables you to get information and advice to help you prepare, complete declarations on your behalf without the need for specialist advice or software, and submit declarations quickly, saving you time and expense. Traders will also be supported to understand the information they will need to collect about their goods, including their description, value, and any supporting documentation required. The service uses this information to complete import and safety and security declarations on behalf of traders. Where a trader uses the Trader Support Service to complete these, they will not need to access HMRC systems, such as the Customs Declaration Service, CDS, or the Import Control System, ICS, themselves. Find out more about the Trader Support Service on gov.uk. The Trader Support Service will deliver guidance and training to businesses. This will include online training modules and webinars. In this webinar, we'll cover import declarations, simplified declarations, supplementary declarations, Key terminology, good housekeeping, and we'll finish by letting you know where you can get help and support after the webinar. Let's start with import declarations. Customs declarations are complex and time consuming. Your first choice is to decide whether you'll do them yourself or get specialist support, and we'll look at this in a little more detail later. Regardless of who completes your declaration, there are two tasks only you can do. 
registering for a UK or EU Economic Operator Registration and Identification Number, an EORI as required, and paying any duties and taxes owed. You'll need an EORI number starting with GB to move goods between Great Britain and the EU. If you're a VAT registered business, HMRC will already have sent you a letter with your GB EORI number. If you haven't received a letter or aren't VAT registered, you must register for a free EORI number beginning with GB on gov.uk forward slash EORI. It only takes 10 minutes to register. You should receive it within a week, but it can take longer during busy periods. If you don't receive your GB EORI number or you've lost or forgotten it, use our guidance and contact details on gov.uk forward slash EORI. You can also check if an EORI number beginning with GB is valid using our EORI checker. You'll need an EORI number that starts with XI to move goods between Northern Ireland and non-EU countries, make a declaration in Northern Ireland, or get a customs decision in Northern Ireland. If you already have an EORI number starting with GB, you need to apply for an EORI number that starts with XI, if you haven't already received one from HMRC in the post, it takes five to 10 minutes to apply and you'll get your EORI number that starts with XI within four working days. If you don't have an EORI number starting with GB, you can apply for an EORI number that starts with GB and one that starts with XI at the same time. If you need to apply for an EU EORI, this needs to be made to the EU member state where your business has a permanent base. If it doesn't have one, please apply to the member state where you first make a declaration or apply for a customs decision. For more information on how to apply for an EU EORI to your member state, go to the Taxation and Customs Union website. Remember, you only need one EU EORI that can be used throughout all member states. As mentioned earlier, businesses like yours might need specialist support to help with your imports. For instance, you might decide to use an intermediary. An intermediary is someone who makes customs declarations for you or your business. This could be a freight forwarder. This is a company that helps their clients move goods globally, including supporting the customs process, or customs agents or brokers. These make sure your goods clear through customs. Other examples of intermediaries are logistics companies, couriers, customs warehouses, or parcel and express operators. You can hire an intermediary to act as a direct representative or an indirect representative. Our webinar, Trader Responsibilities When Using an Intermediary, provides more information about the responsibilities and benefits of using an intermediary. Your customs intermediary will also be able to make sure your goods are classified correctly. If you choose not to hire an intermediary, you'll need to do this yourself. If you don't classify your goods correctly, or if you don't accurately record the origin of the goods in your customs declaration, you may be charged the wrong amount of tax or duty, and you may have to pay a penalty. Our Rules of Origin recorded webinar provides more information. You can also find more information and check that your goods meet the rules of origin on gov.uk. You should approach these experts as soon as possible, given that there will be a high demand for such services. 
Some intermediaries will be very busy at the moment and may not be taking on new clients. However, many still are and capacity is expanding all the time. So do keep trying to get one if the first few you approach are not able to help. You can find a list of businesses that can help on gov.uk. A freight forwarder or customs agent can't register for an EORI on your behalf. If you choose to complete your own declarations, your business will need to have the skills and knowledge to complete them, purchase the specialist software and licenses needed to interact with HMRC systems, and apply for access to the IT systems used to make declarations to HMRC, known as Chief Customs Handling of Import and Export Freight, or CDS, Customs Declaration Service. To make managing payment of customs duties and taxes easier, you could apply for a duty deferment account on gov.uk. This lets you make one payment a month through direct debit instead of paying for individual consignments. You'll need to register on Customs Handling of Import Export Freight, Chief, or the Customs Declaration Service, CDS, and we'll go through this later. For more information about how to apply for access to Chief, CDS and software providers, please visit gov.uk. The UK Global Tariff has now replaced the EU's Common External Tariff. This has been tailored to the needs of the UK economy by removing tariffs on a wide range of products and simplifying 6,000 tariff lines. The UK Global Tariff applies to goods, not services, imported into the UK unless an exception such as a preferential arrangement or tariff suspension applies. This tariff will not apply to goods coming from developing countries that benefit under the generalised system of preferences or to goods originating from countries with which the UK has negotiated a free trade agreement. Simplified declarations. We'll now explain what you'll need to do if you are authorised to complete your own simplified customs declarations. If you hire a specialist, this is what they do for you. But remember, you need to provide them with all the information they need to complete the declaration. There are two types of simplified declarations. Simplified declaration procedure and entry in declarant records, EIDR. Both types will require a submission of a supplementary declaration. A supplementary declaration is an electronic message submitted to HMRC using the Customs Handling of Import and Export Freight System, Chief, or Customs Declaration Service, CDS. The supplementary declaration provides customs with more information about your imported goods. They can then work out the VAT and customs duty you'll need to pay. You'll need to be authorised before you can make an import using the simplified declaration procedure. You can make a simplified frontier declaration electronically with less details about your goods. You must then provide full details in your supplementary declaration by the fourth working day of the month following the import. It will need to include a customs procedure code, a commodity code, and your declaration unique consignment reference or DUCR, which is the main reference number that links declarations. You also need to provide information about the consignee and the consigner, the type, amount and packaging of your goods, transport methods and costs, the customs value and the currency it's in, and any certificates and licences. The authorisation conditions are different for each procedure. Let's look at simplified declaration procedure. 
To become authorised, you need to be established in the UK, have a good customs compliance record, including VAT returns and duty deferments, show how you'll keep within your deferment account limit, Show how you'll identify and report any errors found after submitting your final supplementary declaration to the Simplified Customs Procedures National Insurance Team, if applicable. You must also carry out declaration procedures to a professional standard. Make sure the applicant, directors and senior employees are free of any criminal records that would prevent HMRC from giving authorisation. Have procedures in place to ensure you don't import prohibited goods. Have licences for any restricted goods. and have procedures in place to manage declarations. If you choose to become authorised, it's worth doing it as soon as possible. An authorised agent can allow a UK-based trader to use their authorisation on a direct basis. Please discuss with your agent if this is something you'd like to consider. More information can be found on gov.uk. Now entry in declarant records. You'll need to be authorised to use entry in declarant records before you can make an import using the procedure. You can then enter the goods into your records and provide full details about them in a supplementary declaration. You'll need to include the following information in your records. The Customs Procedure Code, a unique consignment reference, such as an invoice number, stock record number or job number, the purchase number and, if available, the sales invoice numbers, the date and time of entry in records, creating the tax point, which is used for working out VAT payments later. You also need a written description of the goods, the commodity code based on the description of the goods, customs value and quantity of goods, for example, the number of packages and items or net mass. You must meet the same conditions that apply for simplified frontier declaration procedures. But you must also show that you'll keep records of all declarations for no less than four years after their submission date. and you can meet licensing and other control requirements. You'll need to show that you can manage your business in a way that allows customs to make effective compliance checks. For example, how you'll keep an audit trail, your business records are backed up and kept secure, you'll identify and handle errors related to the flow of goods. Some licensing processes are digital and you can only process these licenses on a declaration in chief or CDS. We'll tell you if you need to do this for your goods. To apply for authorization to use simplified declarations, you need to complete form C and E 48. You'll also need to hold a duty deferment account to pay any customs duties and taxes due. This lets you make one payment a month through direct debit instead of paying for individual consignments, as mentioned earlier. HMRC will confirm your authorisation to use simplified declarations in a letter. This will tell you what conditions you'll need to maintain to keep it. Once you're authorised, you can start making declarations using simplified declarations. You'll need to make your supplementary declarations before the fourth working day of the month following the date of import. 
the customs duties and taxes owed will be calculated and notified to you soon after and payment taken on the 15th day of the month. You must now submit a full customs declaration or use simplified declarations if you're authorised to do so for any goods you're importing. Between the 1st of January 2021 and the 30th of June 2022, you can import all goods, including goods that are controlled, without making an entry summary declaration. This is also known as the Safety and Security Declaration. Supplementary declarations. The details to be declared on the supplementary declaration vary depending on the customs procedure code used. We'll explain more about customs procedure codes, CPCs, later. A supplementary declaration includes a date and time. This can be either the acceptance date and time of the associated simplified frontier declaration or the date and time of entry into the UK if using entry in declarants records and you added it to your records. If your business is not established in the UK, you'll need a UK established customs agent or intermediary to deal with customs for you. A permanent business establishment is a place of business where staff are permanently employed and where the technical resources of the business are always present. Customs operations must be wholly or partly carried out there. You can check if you're established in the UK or EU for customs on gov.uk. If you decide to do them yourself, before making your first import, you must choose which simplified declaration authorisation to apply for, entry in declarant records or simplified declaration procedure. Apply for a duty deferment account to pay any customs duties and taxes owed. Apply for your authorisation as soon as possible and at least 120 days before you need to make your first import. HMRC is aiming to process applications for approval to use duty deferment within 30 working days, when all the required information is provided by the applicant. It may take longer if you need to provide a guarantee from a financial institution. As mentioned earlier, you'll need to apply for access to the Customs Handling of Import and Export Freight Chief, or the Customs Declaration Service CDS, systems. You'll need compatible software to use Chief or CDS, and you can find a list of software developers on gov.uk. Let's go over what you need for both. Chief is the system used to make import and export declarations. You'll need a Chief badge to access the system so you can submit a supplementary declaration. You can apply by using form C1800. You will be asked to provide information such as your contact details and your AORI number to be able to link your business to the Chief Badge. You'll need to purchase commercial software that is compatible with the Chief system to be able to submit your supplementary declaration. You can find a list of software developers on gov.uk. The CDS system will let you make customs declarations, get import VAT statements and certificates to help you complete your VAT return, get duty deferment statements. Remember, you'll need software which is compatible with the customs declaration service to submit your declaration. To access this system, you'll need the Government Gateway user ID and password that you use for your business or organisation or yourself if you're applying as an individual. If you don't have a user ID, you can create one when you start. You also need to tell us your Economic Operator Registration and Identification Number that starts with GB your unique taxpayer reference, UTR, 
the address for your business that we hold for our customs records. You'll also need your national insurance number if you're an individual or a sole trader and the date you started your business. Your EORI number and Customs Declaration Service registration will be linked to your Government Gateway account. You can't apply for more than one EORI number using your Government Gateway account. If you complete your own customs declarations, please be aware that we've published more information on how to submit the correct declaration, including the codes to use if you use Chief or the Customs Declaration Service. If your goods move through a port using the Goods Vehicle Movement Service, you'll now need to enter RRS01 in box 44 for Chief or Data Element 2 forward slash 2 for the Customs Declaration Service. For more details, please refer to the recently published Customs Information Paper on gov.uk. However, if like most traders, you use a customs expert like a freight forwarder or a customs broker to make your declarations, please check that they are doing this for you. If your authorisation for simplified customs declarations is accepted and you have a duty to ferment account in place, it will be valid from the date shown on your authorisation. You'll need to either account for VAT on your VAT return if you're VAT registered, or pay VAT when making the supplementary declaration if you're not VAT registered or would prefer to do this. You must submit monthly Intrastat supplementary declarations for the movement of goods between the EU and Northern Ireland. You can find more information in Notice 60, Intrastat General Guide on gov.uk. Delayed declarations. If you made your initial declaration in your own records using the staged customs controls between the 1st of January to the 31st of December 2021, you can choose either authorisation to make your supplementary declaration. For any goods imported using simplified declarations, you now need to follow the rules for the authorisation you have. You'll need to either have authorisation to make simplified declarations or make full import declarations. You can no longer delay declarations for goods you import to the UK, with the exception of goods from Ireland. This means if you're importing non control goods from the island of Ireland to Great Britain, you can still delay making your customs declarations for up to 175 days, as long as you make an entry in declarant records at the time of import. This includes the movement of goods from Northern Ireland to Great Britain via Ireland. Now some key terminology. Classifying your goods correctly helps to make sure duties and import VAT charges are paid, show whether goods need an export or import licence, and identify goods with special import or export arrangements. Commodity codes. The process of finding the right code is called classification. To check the current commodity codes, duty and VAT rates, use our helpful tool on gov.uk. Choosing the correct customs classification means that you'll pay the correct amount of duty and VAT. You'll know if duty is suspended on any of your goods, meaning it's owed. Know if preferential duty rates can be applied. And you'll know if you need an import or export licence for your goods. 
You can find more information about preferential duty rates on gov.uk. Import value. For any import process used to import goods to the UK, you must provide HMRC with details of their value and include it in your customs declaration. More information on how to value your goods can be found in Notice 252. There are six methods to work out the value of the goods you are importing. Transaction value. This is based on the price you pay or plan to pay a seller when sold for export to the UK. This is in accordance with specific rules. You must provide evidence of the price paid with your import entry, such as the seller's invoice. You can find details of transaction value and the other five methods of value in your goods in Notice 252. Incoterms. Incoterms are a set of rules which define the responsibilities of sellers and buyers for the delivery of goods under sales contracts. Cost, insurance and freight, or SIF, is a common inco term you may see on an invoice. If you see SIF on an invoice, it means that the seller is responsible for all costs until the goods have been unloaded at the named destination port. Customs Procedure Codes, CPC. Customs Procedure Codes identify the customs and or excise regimes which goods are entered into or removed from. CPCs are made up of seven digits, for example, 4071010. The first two digits, 40, identify the customs procedure applied for or the customs regime goods are being entered into. 40 means the goods are being declared to free circulation. The third and fourth digits identify the previous customs procedure applied for, the customs regime the goods are being withdrawn from. In this example, 71 means customs warehousing. The last three digits, 010 are a specific code which provides more details about the goods. These are national codes which break the headings into more detail. To summarise, CPC 4071010 tells HMRC the goods are liable to customs and or excise duty and or VAT or otherwise not in free circulation that they're removed from a customs warehouse and are for the personal use of entitled members of visiting NATO forces. Now some good housekeeping. If you're using a freight forwarder or agent to make your customs declaration, Please ensure you discuss and agree if your customs agent is representing you directly or indirectly, as this affects your liability for customs charges. Provide them with clear details and information about your import. Keep a copy of each import or export declaration. Make sure the correct procedures are used for imports and exports. Remember, it's your responsibility to provide accurate information if you choose to use an intermediary. We're nearly at the end of the webinar now, so here's a summary of what we've covered today. We covered import declarations, simplified declarations, supplementary declarations, some key terminology, good housekeeping, and now I'll let you know where you can get some more help and support after the webinar. For help with HMRC processes for importing, exporting or customs relief, please go to gov.uk forward slash transition 
or call the Customs and International Trade Helpline on 0300-322-9434. You can also sign up to HMRC's weekly email updates to traders that provide hints, tips and information about where you can access more support. You can ask and get answers to specific questions about HMRC processes for importing and exporting by visiting our customer forums. Our full range of help and guidance can be viewed online from your mobile, tablet or PC at any time. The way we do business with the EU has changed. So it's best to act now and visit gov.uk forward slash transition to help you prepare for the end of the transition period. Thank you for watching.